Hi, my joys. How are you? Look at this. I actually, those of you who have come to my um, Fab, Fun and Fearless Amazing Abstracts class, let me just get this on to a good angle. I know it's not the best angle for me because I haven't even done hair and makeup today. It's just all natural and I'm still cleaning my fingers. But you may remember I had a big, huge canvas that I had tacked to the wall and um, I had set an intention. I wanted to create my biggest canvas yet and I suddenly had, like, I'm very inspired, as you may know, by the uh, singer Pink and her album called Beautiful Trauma, which is really just honouring the fact that it's a traumatic time on the planet and like owning that shadow side, but also saying, well, okay, how do you shop for beauty and how do you shop for the beautiful people and how do you shop for the beautiful memories? And I'm all about um, how do you keep showing up for joy, even if you're feeling wounded, um, if certain things are going on in your life and you feel like maybe you can't create or you can't paint. It's the very absolute time that you should paint because there's so much raw energy in your soul. Uh, during that time, so this this is I am sharing in my course that in my in my tutorial teaching what do we call it our woman's group <laughs> in the portal. Um, I was sharing that I've been really angry. I've been feeling really angry, and as a child, I never owned my anger. I it was much safer in my family because there was a lot of violence in my family, a lot of rage, a lot of beatings, a lot of, you know, so trigger warning if you don't want to listen to that, um, go and watch a soap opera or something or just protect yourself. Um, there's no need for you to listen to something that's going to trigger you. But I've been encouraged to be a bit honest about what's been going on in my life and how I became the joyful artist and how I pour that into this into the paint. So I wanted just to share this video as I've just finished it. Well, I haven't finished it, who knows? It may need more layers. I may go on to the other panel um, across the way. I may make a series of three and then decide what to do. Uh, but I wanted to share the inspiration behind this painting while it's still really live. So I was thinking, it just came to me, an image came to me of my family home where I grew up. And in many ways I was, I had a very privileged upbringing. I had, I went to really good school, I went to a private school, I went to a Catholic school. Um, not that it matters that it's Catholic, but I went to a private school. Um, but but I, I experienced significant trauma in my life. Even going to the private school, um, a woman in the uniform shop, um, misled us, told a lie basically, and said that I, now I must have been in the 1980s sometime, that I had to wear a Panama hat, white gloves, uh, and yeah, a tie was compulsory. But, and it, it was called Erskine College, and um, when I turned up, no one else had a Panama hat, no one else was wearing gloves. It was really, really embarrassing. And as a young person, I was always terribly embarrassed. Um, my parents, for whatever reason, used to often um, belittle me and say terrible things about me, and I was always feeling uh, ashamed. So then all my friends went to a public school and I went to a private school. It didn't feel like a gift at the time, um, but it certainly was a gift. So I, yeah, I found that quite traumatic though, turning up knowing that someone had deliberately lied to me just to tease me. And then later, I mean, it's funny now, um, I've had a lot of therapy. It's funny now when I think back of Erskine College and I, when I was younger, so even when I was a young person, I can't remember when I wrote my first poem, but it probably was around, I had it published around when I was eight or nine years old. And my, um, I wrote poetry when my Siamese cat got run over and died. I wrote um, a sad poem about how much I hated cars. And I also wrote a, I did a picture of a little lion and anyway all the school teachers found the little lion picture when they unwrapped their fish and chips at lunchtime and they teased me relentlessly and they pasted the picture all around the school, Cassie's little lion 
and um, everyone really teased me and I was about 15, 16 then and I had done it when I was only like six or seven and I'd been terribly proud of my beautiful painting uh, or the fact that I got published with my drawing and then I just felt really ashamed and embarrassed and anyway, so that's part of what I'm, the energy I'm putting into this painting. Uh, inspired by the beautiful trauma is around growing up in 111 Waipapa Road, Hai Tai Tai, and it, I lived in a blue house and it had this most beautiful purpley pink um, bougainvillea, which was amazing, it was so beautiful, and I had a window on the, well, sometimes in the back of the house, and later I moved to the front of the house. And it out looked out at the veranda and I could see all these lovely purples and greens and it was a real refuge for me, um, that room, and I can still see it and I can still see my room at the back of the house too that I used to share with my brother. And um, and then later I I yeah, moved to the front of the house. And then when my parents separated when I was about fourteen or fifteen, finally, um, I, we, I Oh, that's right. Mum always said that Dad wanted us to... He liked us when we were little, but when we were older and had a voice and opinion, he wanted us to live in the attic. And I think there's a book called Flowers in the Attic. And he always was saying children should be seen and not heard. And um, he always liked the sound of his own voice, really. And we he built uh, rooms in the attic, so he literally put us in the attic. We have... Uh, very lovely rooms, um, very, very nice, modern. I remember the colourful um, curtains. Mum was always good with interior design. And we basically stayed in the attic and we had a spiral st staircase in the attic. And so there's kind of a spiralling energy in this painting. I think that's sort of subconsciously coming through is those memories that are, when I trained to do art therapy, the art therapy was very much dredging subconscious memories, memories that you had forgotten that were coming back for illumination and healing. So uh, when I had my beautiful psychic reading yesterday, one of the things was to share more about the healing of the healing within my art, the healing within my courses, the healing basically within myself, because I've learned how to not be a victim but to show up for joy and to help others do that too through my counseling training my psychology training my art therapy training and just my own um my own journey really and i've learned to nourish in fact who was it that said pam Gre pam, uh, pam gregory the british astrologer she was saying and i really resonated finally she shared something about herself and it really resonated so much i thought wow you know you've been through quite a lot and it just deepened my connection to her so um i thought well if she can share but she's an incredibly like myself very private person not one to sort of bang on about her wounds not one um there's one thing in my family we never did and you were never a victim in fact, and you never wanted pity. And I remember when um, I was thinking lately, how come mum never told me she was dying? Why didn't she say, look, I'm dying, I'm I'm dying? You know, why did I have to... I, I literally saw, nursed her on her deathbed two days, one day before she died, and she never told me she was dying. She never told me she knew that she was dying, that, that this was it, until one point came and she said I don't think I'm going to make it and I said rubbish just keep putting some weight on and then she passed when I left the house I remember going back and giving her a, uh, I just had a premonition so the psychic also said for me to trust more my intuitive knowledge and I just had an intuition I left the house and then I came back into the house I just had a feeling and I said to her I'm really I, I love you and I'm so grateful that I had that those two weeks with my mother um, who I've had an incredibly difficult uh, relationship with and in some ways as we sort of flesh out the imbalance in the world with um, my sister and brother getting a full inheritance and me getting two thirds uh, then a lot of this stuff is sort of flitting around and coming to light um, you know still keep having this kind of treated um, as less worthy than, um, say, the sun, 
and um, I'm the oldest daughter. And anyway, um, I'm going to be just standing up and using my voice about that. Um, poor mum was manipulated before she passed. And it's a conversation she had with me and I'll never forget it. And um, I wish perhaps I had of, yeah, I just talked with her more about that. But I was kind of, whether I'm raised to or whether I just have manners to, to talk about someone's will just seems really incredibly impolite. Um, but it wasn't something that other people in my family had a problem with. Anyway, um, I digress. The, the, um, so the painting really is a lot of that. I'm calling it a happy heart because I was always a happy child. I remember right, right from the get-go, I just had a happy disposition. You can see it, how I was born, how I came through, how I was born under Libra, Venus. And then my brother was born and he did not have a happy heart. He was separated. Well, he was born 11 months after me and then he was separated out from his family or from us you know from the babies remember they used to put them all in the same room but he kept bellowing he just was born with a very um i read somewhere you call it a a yob personality which is boy opposite which is a an aggressive personality and that's just Perhaps through no fault of his own, that's just the temperament that he got he got given and it's worked for him as an entrepreneur, but he lives, he's, you know, 57 or something, no children, no wife, no, and, and just incredibly, um, yeah, I have found him to be aggressive. So part of my family trauma, not in this house, but another house, was um, being physically assaulted and smacked in the face by my brother, which, you know, I, I've never really uh, understood my mother saying that that was acceptable and not um, holding them to account. So he's done some good things in my life, but of late, not, not very good things. So part of that is that a lot of the trauma of that house. But in saying that, I was still born with a happy disposition and, and the psychic in the reading was saying, I'm here really to, um, hey Carol, I know that you understand this piece is priceless. She's saying I'm here to he heal the trauma within the DNA of my ancestral lineage. And I can definitely see that um, through things that happen with my grandmother who turned to alcohol with her trauma of being fostered at the age of four because her father went to prison, of never seeing her brother again or, or her mother, of, of feeling unworthy um, of yeah and then for whatever reason she could also be she could turn on a dime and be very cruel and nasty and quite um, there numerous times where she's really verbally attacked me and then my mother's ganged in on it and then yeah so I, feel, I actually do feel pity now for mum because I think when she was saw how kind I was to her when she was dying I think she felt a lot of regret that she hadn't, we had never been able to be, there were moments when we were close and then there were moments when she was so unpredictable and chaotic. She could, she could, she's literally like a, a wild cat that's been domesticated and then they will just turn on you. Um, so it's a really confronting environment to live in where you, you don't have any consistency, you don't have a safe place, you never really feel safe. Um, but as Pam Gregory, going back to that, said, it was rich, fertile uh, fertiliser for the person that she has become. And I try as much as I can to not... Um, it's really easy to victimise other people. It's, it's, well, I'm finding it quite easy to be a pleasant person. But it would be, I'm sure it feels, must feel amazing for some people just to be a complete tosser and a rageful person. But then in saying that, if you look at the work of the Japanese scientists who studied water molecules, when people are rageful and nasty, uh, their whole um, molecular body, their DNA, everything shifts, the majority of water, they become polluted and cloudy, the aura becomes cloudy, they can... Uh, uh, attract entities. Um, I think maybe that's why so many people spiral into addictions. Um, some just because they're so sad, but others because they're so angry. I've counselled a lot of angry people who have who have fallen into addictions. Uh, and as my psychic was saying yesterday, a lot of people have fallen. The light is lifting. The veil is lifting. 
people's true colours are being shown and I think there's a lot of hope for us and their true colours are coming through and uh, we can see more clearly the uh, charades, the lies, etc. So all of that, it's pretty heavy, isn't it? But all of that is in this painting, which is, um, and I know I've still got to work this area in here, but there's a, a blank space in here that um, is not intentional. It's just that I literally ran out of paint. But I, I didn't want to stop painting. I didn't want to stop just turning up to paint because I felt like I didn't have enough paint. I wanted to start it at least, not put it off, come in, come down to the studio. I was talking myself out of it all day, but it's Leonardo da Vinci's birthday, the 15th of April. Um, I was kind of, in, I suppose, inspired by that because he inspires me so much. And he had a massive um, inheritance problem with his family. They, with his stepbrothers, his uncle left him a whole bunch of land and a property and they tried to go in for it and he had to go to court and he really had to fight. And remember, he was never legitimised by his father, whereas his stepbrothers were. They were legitimate children. Um, they could join uh, some of the master guilds, whereas Leonardo couldn't. He was always regarded as a bastard. So he doesn't even really use his father's surname. He's always referred to the town from where he came, Leonardo da Vinci, from da Vinci, from the town of da Vinci. So, or Vinci. Um, so yeah, I just thought, and, and coming back to painting with oils, I've just, I've just absolutely adored it, and I realised that's my, that's the sacred passion that I was talking about on my blog. On my blog. I remember seeing Van Gogh's paintings, and Carol's got a couple of my ones inspired by that. Um, in New York and he and it was the oil it, it was the reminder of the oil and how much I love painting in oils so I've had a lovely time over Easter you could think like the resurrection painting in oils during the dancing in a field of colors or flowers exhibition and now I I'm really dancing you can see how I'll just give you a moment to see how um, lyrical the painting is how gestural and, and of course, when we talk about true colours, I've got a business called Blue Giraffe Publishing, which is for my self-empowerment books, Blue Orchid Publishing for my romance books. Blue is a really important colour to me. Um, blue is so such a beautiful, royal, regal colour. And then the violets and the greens, I've had my colours done in terms of spiritual colours. And violet, I'm a violet green person, which I'll talk about in a blog and I'll talk about where you can find out what you are as well. So um, all I wanted to say, um, what was that? What were you saying? They are, oh, <laughs> you got room? You got room for a big one? <laughs> yeah, I, I just love it. I'm really, really, see if I stood there, it might be a bit better and you wouldn't see that hole in the composition. But, you know, sometimes it takes months to resolve a painting, months to um, for it to, uh, come into its true essence but yeah the violet the greens and also the clarity of the colors and then I imagine you know I was always spiritually protected so when I was doing the composition I was always putting that in that you know they say you're born into a particular family to um <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're born into a particular maybe a little print you're born into a particular family for particular life lessons, soul lessons, and that is in this painting too with the light. Um, I was always, there's so many times in my life uh, that I've had near misses with terrible things that could have happened to me. And a Maori woman once said, oh, it's your kaitiaki. Your kaitiaki is here. And then once, so that's Guardian, and then once, uh, and she was a beautiful Māori woman that some of you may know in Wellington, Wai Morgan. Wai Morgan, and I did some channeling, learning, channeling, intuition courses with her, and it was really amazing. And um, I could see people's ancestors. I saw a wonderful ancestor of a Māori man that was on the course. I, I saw his ancestors. <laughs> I'm the kind of, I'm a skeptic. And I respect people who are skeptics. And I'm not a skeptic 
I'm a skeptic up until the moment I experience it for myself, which is very much like Leonardo da Vinci as well. When I experience it for myself, then I believe it. And I and I saw with my eyes his ancestor, and I picked up this Murray man's. And there was a particular uh, we had to was it psychometry, a, a thing that he had. We picked it up, and I and I could see flames and a fire, and I could see him hiding and crying and blaming himself. And I told him in this tutorial teaching environment I said you weren't to blame I and I was so fearful because I thought what am I talking about what would I know and it turned out it was exactly what had happened to him when he was a child so I have a great respect for the spiritual world a great respect for Māori um, in fact somebody put on a Facebook post recently oh you like that girl don't you cuz because she's a taonga and I was reading a book my brother my father had in his bookshelf it's called Tahonga which is, um, has many meanings, but basically it's a person who's a conduit between what he calls the Father Almighty and the people on earth and to be of service. And they do that in many ways, channeling, healing, all sorts of, all sorts of ways. Um, but they always say you don't call yourself one. If someone calls you one, then that's a bit different. So, I, yeah, I was quite amazed by that. But anyway... It's not really a, a, well, it is and it isn't. I do want to be of service to people and help people, and that's why I show up for teaching. It's why I create my paintings. It's why I'm sharing more of my story. It's why I'm helping people realise it, it doesn't have to be a life sentence to have something traumatic happen to you. You can use that constructively, as many great artists do, many great, uh, the good politicians do, the people who are inspired to make positive change, not the ones that are corrupted with their own greed and their lies. You know, they'll have their, their time will come. They've fallen down the trap door, the rabbit hole. Um, I want to be this bright light for people. And yeah, I just, what I really wish is I had my, I really wish I could, <laughs> I really wish I could put that purple in right now. Um, but I'm going to have to learn that there's a reason that I can't put that purple in at the moment. And I'm just going to let the um, painting rest now. And I'm going to go and rest and have a nice bath. But I just really, I suppose the message in here, share a little bit about my story. Encourage you, don't worry if you're tired or um, something, just show up anyway. Because once you get into that sacred passion, it's that energy, you, you I often find... You're not thinking, you're not worrying, you're not ruminating, you're in this hugely imaginal, amazing five-dimensional energy, which is all mind, no mind. You're in the zone, you're in your joy bubble. And as I'm calling this painting, I'm a happy, happy heart. So thank you for watching. I'm super grateful. I'd love to see your comments and know what you think about it. And if you've got anything, um, to say about this beautiful painting do let me know i have to go and measure it now so i can work out how tall it is but just give you a little look a little quiet look for a minute as i disappear off screen